Hey, this is Kyle with kylecgraves.com. In this video, we're talking about rule of thumb, how much house can you afford? So we're gonna be talking about what's comfortable versus what you can afford. So those are gonna be the two big differences. Uh, your comfort level, if I don't erase everything, your comfort level versus what you actually can afford from a mortgage company. So a quick side note is there's gonna be timestamps in the comments below so you can skip around this video to find different points that you're looking for. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. First of all, we need to talk about the idea behind comfort level versus what you can afford. Sometimes a lot of people ask me, uh, how much can I get approved for? And while it's fun to know how much a bank is willing to give you, it's not a good question if you're actually looking at long-term growth for you and your family financially. And the reason why is because you want to make sure that your finances um, have a budget that's set up that's comfortable for you in where you are right now and where you want to grow. Lenders will give you a lot more money than you're probably comfortable with. All right. So if you ask for the max, sometimes it can be easy to, uh, you know, get a little too friendly with a higher mortgage than you should be taking on in your budget. So first, you need to consult your budget, figure out what's gonna be comfortable for you that aligns with everything in your debt payoff plan and in the goals that you have in investing in the future. All right, so we need to talk about debt to income. So debt to income, is one of the main numbers, it's a ratio, used by lenders uh, and yourself to figure out how much debt do you have compared to how much income you have. So the way that you figure out your debt to income ratio is you take your gross income and you divide that by your monthly minimum debt payments. Okay, so your monthly minimum debt payments would be things like what you pay on your car loan, what you pay on your student loans, your minimum credit card payments, um, and if you have a mortgage right now, what your minimum payment is on your mortgage. So you take all of those together combined with what you estimate your mortgage payment is going to be, and then you're going to take your income and divide it by that number. That's going to give you a ratio. So for instance, your ratio might be, uh, it might be 36%. So what that would mean is of your salary or of what you make every single month gross, that is before taxes, 36% of that amount you pay in minimum monthly debt payments. Okay. So one rule that's kind of thrown out on the internet is this 2836 rule. All right. So this is for a 30 year loan. The 2836 rule basically says your uh, debt to income ratio just for your mortgage payment that you're going to get should be 28% or less. So I'm going to pull out a calculator here so I can do some of this math a little bit easier. But the 2836 rule would basically say if you have, uh, let's say, a $5,000 per month income, all right, so this is $5,000 per month gross, uh, if you did that times 28%, let me see here, since I can't do that in my head, that your max mortgage payment would be $1,400, okay? And then the 36 of that is how much total debt you have. All right, so um, then if we use the same scenario, if you made five grand a month times 36, that brings us up to 1800. All right, so this is basically saying the max mortgage payment you should take on is 1400 if your debt is another 400 a month, giving you 1800. Okay, now, I don't think this is a fantastic rule. This is a rule that I see a lot on the internet. The problem with it is $1,400 a month as a mortgage payment on a $5,000 a month uh, pay is a little tight, right? Because you're not taking home $5,000 a month. You're taking less of that because of taxes, maybe because of retirement accounts, and you have other bills to pay, maybe some other debt to pay. $1,400 a month could be tight. So that's why I think you're always wanting to default back to what's comfortable for you, what fits in your budget, not just these arbitrary rules that you might find online. But 2836 is a rule that's out there. It's okay, it might be a good guideline for you. All right, there's also um, the Dave Ramsey rule. Dave Ramsey is super conservative. So with Dave Ramsey, what he's saying is that your mortgage payment should, first of all, only be on a 15 year. He doesn't believe in doing a 30 year loan or a 25 or a 20, only a 15 year loan. And then your mortgage payment should be 25% or less of your after tax income. So in this scenario with the five grand a month, let's say your after tax uh, income was $3,500 a month, okay? So after taxes, you get paid $3,500 a month. What Dave Ramsey would say is you take 3,500 
times 0.25, that gives you 875 a month that you're allowed to spend max. And this would be on a 15 year loan. Okay, so that's a drastic difference in affordability. You have on one side, Dave Ramsey being super conservative, and then you have other roles like 2836 that are a lot more lenient because over here you could do a 30 year loan, but with Dave Ramsey, it's only 15 year. So those are two roles that you can keep in mind depending on the kind of strategy that you wanna go with. If you're looking at what you can afford as a max, um, normally conventional loans are going to go a max up to uh, just under 50% debt to income. FHA will actually go up to 57% debt to income. So you can see lenders will give you actually quite a lot of money relative to the income and debt that you have, but that doesn't tell the full scope of the picture. Just because you can get a certain amount of money doesn't mean it's a good decision. Just because a lender and an underwriter is gonna give it to you doesn't mean it's a good decision moving forward. Comfort is the main thing that you should be looking at. All right, and what we mean by comfort is looking at your budget. Make sure that you're tracking where money is going. How much are you spending on gas? How much did you spend on groceries last month? You should be able to know those numbers or look them up in a software that you have or an Excel spreadsheet or even if you write it down on paper. That way you can always forecast what money is gonna look like for you in the future. This is what's gonna help you uh, not have to live paycheck to paycheck and make sure that you build up some savings and some cushion with your money to be able to do that. One tool that I use to figure out what's affordable for me um, is a tool called uh, You Need a Budget. It's uh, youneedabudget.com. And it's basically a software that helps me budget everything and make sure that I'm always prepared for next month's expenses. So ultimately, how much house can you afford? Really, there's a bunch of different roles that you're gonna find online. Uh, this right here is gonna show you what the max that a lender is going to give to you. But ultimately, it's gonna come down to your budget. What's comfortable for you? Is this a payment that you wanna make over a long period of time, and is it going to get in the way of you living a lifestyle that you wanna have? If you wanna spend money traveling, or spend money on your kids, or spend money on a hobby that you enjoy, you can't take a big house payment and do those at the same time. All right, so focus on your budget, focus on what's comfortable for you. Thanks so much for watching this video.